This is the day you should always remember is the day that you almost... Captain Jack Sparrow. The Pirates of the Caribbean franchise is a true sensation when you really think about it. Aye. What started as an adaptation of a popular Disney theme park ride turned into one of the most profitable brand names in recent film history. A brand that now, first and foremost, is being associated with a drunk, rather funny walking and simultaneously brilliant pirate, Jack Sparrow. There should be a captain in there somewhere. We tacked along with him five times, watched him battle the undead and look for treasures. But ever since Dead Men Tell No Tales, it has become awfully quiet when it comes to Jack Sparrow. Not sure I deserve that. Interestingly enough, part 5 was originally meant to set up the stage for the grand finale. But after lukewarm reviews and rather disappointing box office results, a sixth film was put on hold. Is that it? I think so. That did, however, not stop the constant rumors regarding a new entry for the series. Ranging from a continuing chapter to the idea of a reboot that would focus on a new generation of characters without the appearance of Johnny Depp, aka Captain Jack Sparrow. Did no one come to save me just because they missed me? Why do we even need a part 6? What is so special about this franchise? And why does Jack Sparrow need to return once more? All of these questions will now be answered. Savvy. And since I will discuss plot points from all previous pirate films, a spoiler warning is in effect. Hold your fire! Pirates of the Caribbean is a milestone when it comes to film franchises. Hooray! And like many other tales of success, not everything went according to plan. The role of Neo from The Matrix, for example, was originally written with Will Smith in mind. The shark from Jaws was meant to be seen all the time. And Johnny Depp almost never became the captain of the Black Pearl. What has become of my beloved Pearl? In the case of The Matrix, Will Smith rejected the script in order to star in Wild Wild West. The animatronic shark from Steven Spielberg's classic was causing problems and Disney, well, they were not fond of the way Johnny Depp portrayed the character. So that's the reason for all that. But in hindsight, we couldn't imagine anyone but Keanu Reeves playing Neo. Jaws became a success because of what we didn't see. And Johnny Depp's Jack Sparrow is now considered to be one of the icons of blockbuster history. You are without doubt the worst pirate I've ever heard of. But you have heard of me. No one saw the success of the first film coming. After all, the movie managed to bring back a long gone genre. The pirate adventure. You're Pirate. Charming characters, impressive sets and locations, the combining of fairy tale, fantasy and adventure were crucial key factors that conjured the love of viewers worldwide. I love you. Surprisingly though, the film shares a lot of similarities with another cult classic that once no one believed in. Star Wars. That's impossible! Both films follow a young naive hero with a good heart, who due to exterior circumstances becomes entangled in an adventure. Both films feature a cool anti-hero who joins forces with our lead character in order to free a beautiful yet tough royal daughter, who has been kidnapped by a villain whose past is linked to our hero. Here we go again. The film became a huge success and similar to Star Wars was turned into a trilogy. That's very interesting. The sequels were also heavily influenced by the space opera. The second film ended on a cliffhanger in which the fate of our charismatic rogue was left hanging in the balance. While part 3 dealt with a rescue mission and our hero's journey to become a larger than life being like his father before him. Even though the sequels received mixed reviews, I personally gotta admit that there isn't a single one of these films that I flat out hated. Perhaps I had some doubts. This is the worst apology I've ever heard. The first remains the undisputed number one, but I got something out of all of these films. The world used to be a bigger place. The world's still the same. It's just less in it. Pirates of the Caribbean Part 4 drastically changed the direction of the franchise. Will Turner and Elizabeth Swan were no longer part of the series. That's not good enough! 
Instead, we witness Jack Sparrow's first standalone adventure. Until this very day, I seem to be one of the few people that actually enjoyed this film. It wasn't an epic battle between good and evil like the previous two sequels, but rather a simple pirate adventure, something that I personally wanted to see during part 2 and 3. The return of Barbosa made me happy as well. To me personally, he's every bit as important for the franchise as Johnny Depp is, and their relationship became increasingly more interesting with each film. Sometimes they were mortal enemies, sometimes just rivals, and sometimes even allies. Can we have a drink? We'll drink at the fountain! On Stranger Tides dealt with the notorious Fountain of Youth that a lot of folks, good guys, bad guys and everything in between were after. This chase reminded me of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Part 5 or Dead Men Tell No Tales had a similar concept, but simultaneously introduced new blood. Henry Turner, the son of Will and Elizabeth, as well as Karina Smith, who near the end of the film was revealed to be Barbosa's daughter. These new characters are reason enough to reject the idea of a reboot in order to introduce fresh faces. After all, we have literally just met them, and their connection to our old heroes alone makes them that much more interesting. Dead Man Tell No Tales had a rather surprising ending. Not only did Hector Barbosa die a hero, both Will and Elizabeth returned, and the Davy Jones curse was finally lifted. But the genuine surprise was the return of the diabolical captain of the Flying Dutchman himself. To reboot the franchise now, with all of these loose ends and unanswered questions out there would be a true shame. It would seem much more reasonable to bring the most tragic villain of the entire series back for one last time. Davy Jones. This tragic antagonist would have a bone to pick with Jack. The return of Will, Elizabeth as well as the passing of the torch to Henry and Karina also seems overdue. But first and foremost it would be a massive shame to bid farewell to Jack in such an uninspired manner. Because his story is far from over. Up until now every single Pirates of the Caribbean chapter gave him the same ending. Him embarking on a new quest. That was the end of part 1, the sequels, part 4 and 5. I have a rendezvous beyond my beloved horizon. But eventually Jack's story needs to come to an end. Either through a heroic death or through him giving up his pirate life. Which is why now would be the ideal moment to bring back Angelica who was first introduced in Pirates 4. She was the one who almost made Jack an honest man. But in the end, he did choose the sea. I gotta go. Jack! And let's be honest, Jack Sparrow needs some redemption after part 5. After all, the Jack Sparrow we saw in Dead Men Tell No Tales was merely a caricature of the witty character we've grown to love. He was a complete doofus who walked around with no pants and made it through life due to nothing but luck. The brilliance of the character was always the fact that he seemed stupid to others. In reality, he was always cunning and a man with a plan. And that was without even a single drop of rum. Every single time Jack was in trouble, he came out on top. That's got to be the best pirate I've ever seen. So it would seem. All thanks to his intellect. Even if he wasn't the best fighter, he managed to beat Turner, Barbosa, and Davy Jones since he was a dirty fighter who always planned one step ahead. He cheated. Pirate. It is exactly that Jack Sparrow that we do need to see one more time. What do you guys think? Do you want to see Pirates of the Caribbean Part 6 or do you prefer a reboot? Let me know in the comment section below. For more original content, check out these videos.